trends. Some funny, some cool, some age very poorly. Programming is a field defined by the hype train, but as much as AI hype bros want you to believe, not every new technology is the next big thing. We all know the true test of a technology is when the 25-year-old tech recruiter who can't open a PDF spams it on the job listing. Just like many musicians, popular technologies fall off. The one thing Ruby and Kanye have in common is that they both fell off the rails. And that brings us to our first technology, Ruby on Rails. You see, before DHH was known for being a Twitter boomer, he made Ruby on Rails, a framework for the programming language Ruby, which powered a few companies you may have heard of, like GitHub, Shopify, Dropbox. It was one of the first batteries-included frameworks that let developers ship fast and reliable MVPs with a good developer experience. Although Ruby did come with some performance concerns, yes, you're seeing that right, it was slower than JavaScript at some point, recent updates have fixed that. Ruby has a strong community, many companies use it. So what happened to the hype? Every 60 seconds in Africa, a new JavaScript framework is released. The real reason Ruby fell off isn't because of something intrinsically wrong with it, but the real reason is that it died in the furious web dev hype warfare because developers aren't people driven by performance, scale, configuration, but shiny new object syndrome. Ruby is simply a victim of the JavaScript federal agency printing more frameworks. Microservices. Microservices were this awesome idea in hindsight, and it made complete sense for Netflix, the company that popularized it. What microservices did was break up the single bad monolithic application you had into multiple tiny apps, which is great for scaling a code base with millions of users, but pre-revenue, pre-idea, pre-code startups don't necessarily need to scale for 100 million people. Microservices were the quickest way to become a 10x engineer. 10 times the apps, 10 times the maintenance, 10 times the pain, 10 times the engineering cost with no users. I'm going to be the first one to tell you, if your user base is less than four digits, you're not going to need Kubernetes. jQuery. If you've worked on a code base older than 2020, chances are you've probably seen the dollar sign of doom floating around, and this time it isn't PHP. jQuery in its heyday was a hit. In the early 2000s after the dot-com bubble blew up everyone's wallets, jQuery was blowing minds. The state of web development in the early 2000s makes our modern ecosystem look like a utopia, and that's mostly because cross-browser compatibility was a complete mess jQuery came and fixed all that. Instead of raw-dogging Ajax, you could write some simple jQuery and go on with your life. For many years, jQuery was the standard, until ES6 dropped, and ported over many of the features in a much cleaner format. Flash apps. I turned 26 later this year, or for 50% of my audience, I'm a nunk. I'm actually so old, I remember when Apple ads used to look like this. Back in the prehistoric days of the internet, there were these things called Flash games. There was nothing more devastating than being 10 years old and Flash not working on your computer. But around the mid-2010s, Flash games started to fade away, and by 2020, Adobe pulled a plug completely. Mostly because it was a security nightmare. They tried to make things better by introducing ActionScript, but all that did was teach people how to use object-oriented programming when hacking Adobe Flash. Speaking of object-oriented, Java applets. They were the way to introduce Java on the web, and the right once run anywhere competitor to Flash but instead it was write once and never deploy. Java applets were renowned for being extremely slow, very easy to hack, and requiring a 50-step ritual to get them up and running. They didn't even work on mobile. A trend that isn't going anywhere anytime soon is using AI to help you ship faster. And you can get started right now by checking out Magic Patterns, the sponsor of today's video. Magic Patterns is an AI prototyping tool that helps you go from idea to user interface within seconds. You go to their site, start prompting, like I want to build a landing page for my blog, and it comes with the full website in React. You can go back and forth with the built-in chat to tweak stuff until it looks just right. You can sync with GitHub if you want to clean it up, export it to Figma if you're working with a designer, or just use their canvas editor to move stuff around visually. What I like the most is that it gives me a solid starting point. I don't have a single design bone in my body, so being able to just type what I want and get something really good is so freaking useful. From there I can tweak it, hook it up to a backend, or just get it out the door faster. So if you're like me and have ideas but no design skills, check out Magic Patterns by heading over to magicpatterns.com or click the link in the description or pinned comment. Thank you to Magic Patterns for sponsoring this video. Before the days of full-stack JavaScript, Mern, Mean, Median, Mode, every programmer would occasionally turn down the music on their Walkman to debug a PHP error. LAMP stack stands for Linux, Apache, MySqueal, and PHP. It was the go-to way to develop web apps in the early 2000s. It was free, open source, and unlike applets, actually ran everywhere. 40% of the internet today still runs on LAMP thanks to PHP and WordPress, but each bit of it has been cooked since then. 
Postgres cooked my squeal, PHP and Apache cooked themselves, and the federal JavaScript agency kept printing more frameworks. CoffeeScript Another victim of the ES6 brigade, CoffeeScript was a language that compiled into JavaScript, and it was coffee that came with my favorite ingredient, syntactic sugar. It made boring old JavaScript read and feel like Python and Ruby. It was the first time JavaScript had arrow functions, the rest and spread operators, destructuring, and many more of the features that we use daily. You might be wondering, if CoffeeScript had all these features in the early 2010s, why bother with JavaScript? Well, the key word here is compilation. All CoffeeScript was eventually compiled into JavaScript, so you'd still need to read JavaScript to debug. And with ES6 already having all these features, CoffeeScript got abandoned quicker than threads. But the Zuck had another product abandoned faster than threads. GraphQL GraphQL was a query language developed by Meta. You see, back in the good old days when you wanted to get data from an API like the name of a user, you'd get the whole object. This is called overfetching. Or sometimes, instead of the data you want, you wouldn't get enough data. This is called underfetching. GraphQL wanted to fix this with precise queries. Now this looks really good for 2015 standards, but modern API specifications made this pretty redundant, since you can define your entire API in a single JSON or YAML file. GraphQL was also an excellent example of front-end throwing all the complexity over to the back-end. It made caching a lot harder than it already is, and it was foobar for security, not React. Believe it or not, front-end frameworks other than React used to exist. For a little while, it was a competition between React, Angular, and Vue, and if your knees hurt after a jog, you'll remember Ember.js and Backbone. But since 2018, 18, React has become the de facto tool. You'd be surprised because when React first came out, it was pretty hated. I mean, it still is. But a famous man once said, there are only two kinds of languages, the ones people complain about, and the ones nobody uses. Speaking of things nobody use, not Git. You'd be very surprised to know there are other version control options besides Git. Subversion, Fossil, Mercurial were all decent picks back in the day. But as of 2020, Bitbucket, one of the last few hosting platforms for Mercurial, pulled the plug. Git won because of a lot of reasons. It was faster, branching and merging makes so much sense, and its ecosystem of tooling. But the most important reason was because of GitHub and their cool mascot, GitHub Copilot. GitHub Copilot's greatest contribution to the technology field will be for generating the Will AI Replace Programmers YouTube Video Economy, and it was quickly forgotten about since. With new AI releases, AI-powered code editors, and competitors, Copilot was firmly planted in the territory of cool logo, but largely useless. Clean code. You see, the way to get rich in 2025 is by wearing a nasal strip and charging $10,000 for an alpha male boot camp. 2008 was a much simpler time. All you had to do was release a mediocre book with a very catchy title. Clean Code is a book that belongs in marketing class rather than programming. For many years, writing clean code was the industry standard, until we came out of our collective hypnosis and realized tools like linters, pipelines, and frameworks already come with decent conventions. Plus, here's my personal hot take big functions that do a lot of things is sometimes very good. Blockchain slash Web3. If you ever met a crypto bro, you'll know about the big ledger in the sky. Blockchain and Web3, along with amazing technologies like NFTs, were gonna change how we own assets. Unfortunately, it became a great way for influencers and celebrities to fund their Lamborghini Urus while we foot the bill. Brain teaser interviews. Another practice from the early 2000s that was quickly abandoned, similar to Guy Fieri, were brain teaser interviews. Before these books were cemented on the shelves of tech pros everywhere, this was the book that every tech bro was reading at the coffee shop, with such riveting questions such as, why is a manhole cover round? How many piano tuners are there in Chicago? Eventually companies realize there's an even worse way to test the aptitude of applicants, and that's soon to be a dying trend. Thank you for your time, I am Big Box.